So welcome back to another episode of Ren's Wasteland Camp Review slash Dumpster Fires of the Commonwealth. As you can see, we are in a cranberry bog. We are right on the edge of the wall. The person's camp in front of me is Argamedes, Agamen, Agamens, Agamedes. I don't know. It looks like Agamemnon without actually spelling it out right. They've got holy fires on sale here and an elder's mark and a few plans that I don't have but only one that I'm going to buy because even if I had the money to buy this I, I wouldn't use it on this character anyway so it's not exactly something that's a priority. So that's the way I kind of judge plans that are clothes and guns, that kind of stuff. Because if it's not a priority, then it's not a priority. Now then, can't go in there because uh, this character is so bloodied, she dies when I jump. Um, but as you can tell, it's a garden. They put down their garden tiles. I understand in this area why you'd want to use these based on the fact that stuff can come in and kill your plants and it's pain. However, that being said, you could always just um, put them somewhere else. Like back that way and actually, you know, use the fact that you're on the edge of the map to your advantage. Because the map edge runs right through the back here. That's where that fence line is. Um, that right there is the uh, shelter. It's the silo. We've got uh, extra planters on here. Looks like this thing's been attacked a lot. Um, I get why you'd put your power source up here, and I get why you'd put a roof on it just to protect it from, you know, stuff showing up. Don't know if uh, this is accessible. It is. Well, let's see. It's a timing thing now. Come on, there we go. So we're going in from the top to the bottom. This is their bedroom. With a, a bed that just screams, uh, I'm pretty sure, all night long. This thing could only be better if you put the fires underneath it from like the, uh, you know, the effects package that they sold us. I like the floor. It's one of my favorites. I like the walls. They're one of my favorites. I don't like them together because they don't look right. It's like uh, either it's too dark in here because the walls are too dark in here, it's too dark in here because the floors are dark in here, or it could possibly be because he didn't really put it, or they didn't put any real lights in this area, and they sh sure as shit didn't make a real kitchen. They just kind of half-heartedly did it. Now, that hat, I can show you where to find those at. Actually, I can probably show you where to find most of those, but... Um, some of them are strictly from the, uh, like, daily ops. I want to say that's where the bloody skull thing comes in. So you've got their bedroom upstairs and a few benches up there that make up sort of a kitchen. Then you've got down here, you've got everything else that you might need. Um, as long as you overlook the fact that you're in the middle of a swamp basically and the room is basically a warehouse and we've got high-end wood paneling on the walls because you know nothing says uh, wasteland like wainscoting so we'll go ahead and just move right along and uh, I'll go ahead and give this a score based on what it actually deserves it's, it's, it's essentially a warehouse with a farm and uh, Interior-wise, they have done really nothing to improve my opinion of that. Exterior-wise, um, it's an odd choice of foundations. That's all I can say. So I'm going to give uh, this person, whose name I butchered to begin with, a uh, bright shiny five. And welcome to the episode. We're going to go to Thick Pig Dees Camp. 
check it out. I'm eventually going to have to start selling stuff off because eventually I'm going to need caps for fast traveling and things like that. Usually whenever I do sell things off, it's typically drugs. Massive amounts of drugs. Sometimes food. But if you see me open up a vendor near you, by all means stop in. I might have things like burgers or I might have things like, you know, speed. All right. So let's check out their uh, vendor here. Think Pigdy's camp. Uh, nothing overpriced. Everything priced really, really low. Everything priced to move, basically. So they, they, they know that, like, you know, this right here is just bulking up their numbers and their inventory. It's just there for... I would say, to be honest, the only people I know that usually keep that many of these things are the uh, people that are running trap camps. Well, let's take a look here. Um, so they got the cutout on the front porch, the glowing sign. You've got the uh, Nuka Cola bottle floating out here, an artillery piece. Another Tesla arc generator that, uh, you know, by all rights should be wireless. Um, and you've got another vendor back here in the back with most of their uh, benches and their dog. Not horrible. Um, their choice for power is kind of questionable. But I get it. They're going for self-sustain. Best kitchen I've seen so far. Doesn't have a stove. Unless you count the big Brahmin grill, which should technically be outside. Um, the other cooking implements, the robot, which if they would have just incorporated it in. Hello, how are you? And they've basically got a museum upstairs. With the guy that they strapped down to a chair. And are pretending his furniture. Yeah. Yeah. So on a scale of 1 to 10 is how I rate camps. I don't know that I really want to go in here. So I'm not going to. I don't need to be wanted on a server. And doors tend to get me wanted here lately. I mean only the last 12 of them that I've opened have I actually gotten wanted from. And let's see. Yeah, that's easy enough to check out by coming up here. It's just their power room. So, yep. Yeah. So, on a scale of 1 to 10 is how I rate camps. And if you notice, this one here is not a terrible camp. But it is not a great camp either. But compared to the other camp, that I showed you earlier this is a wonderful camp and I will give it a six because the person put a lot of effort and time into their collection and they at least tried and made an attempt to make a kitchen although they don't have a bathroom which would have pushed them up you know that extra point and they've got way too many little weird power things going around here for my taste it's like they should have just put out the one generator that they have upstairs or wired up their place a little better because they've got a w glut of stuff that they don't really need here. But that's me saying that. And some people, once they build something, just refuse to take it apart. I get that too. Lumia's baby. Now, there's a novel series by uh, somebody called this, if I remember right, Lumia's Baby. Or no, I'm thinking Damia's Children. Damia's Children, and it's Anne McCaffrey. Um, old novel series, old author, maybe dead at this point. Um, if she's not, she'd be really old. If she is, I'm sorry, and I recommend reading her books. 
she also wrote Dragon Riders of Pern, if I remember right. So let's check out this. This is Lumia's Baby's Camp. And we'll go down through here real quick and see if there's anything good. They have the Gorilla Chair, which I will buy. Not anything in particularly great. Not anything in particularly bad. It is an interesting box in the fact that it is a box and it is, you know, technically floating and it has this stairwell and this stairwell and both of them seem to go up without a problem. So up here you have the workroom and it's actually decked out pretty nice. And the fact that they have their displays back here. They didn't put one over here, which makes me wonder why um although they are doing uniformity well in the fact that they did put it in by the way if you're going to place something on brick walls that are external and you have this issue the easiest way to fix that believe it or not is to put a second one on top of it because what it does is it raises it up just a little bit higher than the actual um texturing for the wall nice nice little bedroom slash doctor's office slash uh, chemistry area um, by the way the reason I called it that is because of the wheelchair okay so up here we've got a bedroom looks like a kids room uh, Dining area with grandma out as your ally with a uh, makeshift kitchen that's just not quite right. Uh, a few plants in the greenhouse area. And on this side, you don't have the way to go up. But on this side over here, you have a way to go up. And then you have the giant Bronto up here, which is the new toy that everybody's trying to figure out how to incorporate into their camps. I get it. Not bad. So technically we'll count that as a prefab. I didn't see a bathroom in here anywhere. Oh, my mistake. There is one right there. Sort of. At least a one piece. It's got a bathtub. And you got the spinning little demons of this game sitting there. They have a water cooler up here. Which makes sense given the fact that they don't have access to water outside. So I'm going to give them a point for that uh, bathroom-ish type thing. And overall design, I'm going to give them a... It's kind of a weird one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give this a 5 because it doesn't feel like it's completely done. It's like it's missing stuff. Not necessarily a lot, but it's like the clutter just isn't quite right. Like the... Like, you know, on one side you've got the alien pod, on the other side you've got nothing. Um, you got the bathroom on this side and the other stuff over there. It, it's just, it's like it's not quite finished. It's about the best way I know to put it. Anyway, this has been Ren for Ren's Wastelands Camp Reviews slash Dumpster Fires of the Commonwealth. I hope you're having a good time playing whatever games you are. I would suggest checking out Conan Exiles if you can. The patch has finally taken root, so to speak, so that it's actually fairly playable and should be good on any console system that you're playing on at any rate. You guys have a good day, and uh, I will check back with you later.